right, welcome everybody. Uh, in this video, we're gonna take a look at one more OneNote document because um, I wanted to get a little bit of variety in the different you know, types of malware that were being dropped from these. So, so, so then thinking about different actors that might be using them and, and how they're structuring them. Um, again, this is very similar to the last time I looked at OneNote that was dropping async rat, and I'll make sure to get um, a link here in the video. Uh, in that I also wanted to understand how they were executing. And so there'll be a little bit of focus on that here today. The sample comes from Malware Bazaar, and we'll get the hash here uh, again, just so I don't ever forget it. It's now permanently a part of the video. I'll also add it to the description. And um, before I do that, I'm gonna have my uh, process monitor, process hacker, I'm sorry, running here off to the side. I'll, I'll condense it down a little bit and then we'll change the view to always on top. And I also have process monitor open. It's not capturing and I've deleted any of the previous re results. So just doing that in order to um, eliminate some of the, uh, the noise. Um, I have my, let's see, my QBot one. So because this was a Quackbot or QBot um, identified as such from Malware Bazaar, I just went ahead and, and labeled it that just to make it a little bit easier for me to keep track of. And uh, before I open that, I'm gonna go ahead and start the capture. So now I can double click, um, just keeping an eye over here on the process activity. Uh, of course, we see our OneNote.exe process launch. And then as this document opens up, we have uh, some advertising from Microsoft. Great, I don't wanna try anything new right now but um, no additional process behavior. So, so very similar to that async rat. Uh, if we scroll or, or kind of open up this document a bit, you'll see the social engineering. This one looks a little bit more professional. In fact, it looks a lot, a lot like the, uh, the type of social engineering we'd see in a malicious office document using the brand, OneNote itself, um, you know, the, the icons, and, uh, and then you know, a, a more, I don't know, I guess you could argue a more legitimate looking message. Um, of course, very similar to the previous, we have this open um, text box that is just essentially masking the script. And if you hover over that, let's see if I can get that to pull back up. There we go. Um, we have the uh, original path that it was inserted from. So I don't see any you know, particularly interesting information here, but maybe in the future, or maybe analyzing uh, enough OneNote documents, this could reveal a way to, to track some actor. Um, but it looks like it was uploaded from zbuild OneNote open.bat. So we have a bat file that is a part of this document. Okay, so we can confirm that. If we stop our capture, I'm just going to look at the process tree from process monitor. Uh, oops, and yeah, okay. So as expected, there was no additional process activity. Okay, we'll go back to process monitor. I'm gonna delete the results. Uh, now, keep in mind, I do not have this particular VM connected to the internet, but we'll go ahead and we'll start the capture again. Let's double click that script. We get that warning saying, hey, something that you are about to do could harm you. And if we look over at the side, we see command.exe, PowerShell, and, um, and then an error saying that the run DLL executable, uh, which you can see over here, it could not find C program data um, ACIAD.jpg. So that would indicate that, you know, in contrast to the previous that just went ahead and async rat just you know, dropped that file into the OneNote doc, this one is reaching out to the internet to download that next stage. And because it's not connected to the internet, it wasn't able to retrieve that. So the attack in a sense failed there's no, at least nothing I've observed, and we'll look at the code here in a minute, but there's no attempt at persistence here so that when the, you know, the user logs off, logs back in, or the system reboots this OneNote, or any, or any remnant from it will run again. Of course, if the user opens this and clicks on the script, they will. Um, but we can now stop our capture here, look at the process tree, and... Now we have more, you know, more details as to what exactly happened. Uh, one of the benefits is if we didn't want to have to go through and actually analyze all of the, the different stages of these scripts, we could pull the location or, or the command here out of this process tree. So we know that it is running open.bat and you'll find that with OneNote docs as well as with Office docs, a lot of times if they're, they're scripts embedded like this, they're gonna show up in the app data local temp 
folder within the file system. And uh, that doesn't mean that they'll always be there. Sometimes the, you know, the office document, the office suite will clean those up. Sometimes they're there. Uh, but we might be able to find open.bat. We'll, of course, be able to just extract this using one dump.py. Um, this then looks like it executed some PowerShell. And you can see here's the entirety of that command. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead. It's a little bit difficult, but I'm going to copy and paste that. And then finally, you'll see the PowerShell trying to download this file and writing it to this location and run DLL trying to run that file as a DLL invoking the wind export. So uh, run DLL 32 is, is just a way then to execute a DLL instead of a um, you know a typical executable. And to do so, you'll often find that the export is passed as an argument here. So we won't have time in this video to get into all the details of the actual DLL, but we will, well, we will take our analysis right up into that point. Okay, uh, if you recall a little bit earlier in this process activity, I grabbed, uh, copied this command. And as you can see in the background, I have that command pasted in. And so what this code is doing uh, is just simply to take each one of these characters and convert it to, it's essentially a from char code. So converting it from that numeric value into a character code and just using base 16 instead of base 10. So if we wanted to decode this, uh, we could further take this and open up CyberChef. We'll paste that array of values in, uh, find the from char code operation and base 16 is what we need so the default works and here you can see there is the powershell command to download the payload from that host and then invoke it through run dll uh, you'll also notice this percent one and and we appear to be missing you know you, the n and the d and run dll 32 well that's actually passed in as an argument from the previous script so uh, now, I went ahead and grabbed this DLL, uh, downloaded it before the demo just so I'd have it to, to show everyone. Um, likely at this point, it's, it's offline, but certainly you have the ability to, um, you know, depending on how you're investigating this, uh, to try to download this as well as if you're actually investigating a compromised host looking for it at these locations. I'm not sure offhand if it deletes itself after execution. I didn't get that far in this particular analysis. Um, I'll also make sure to add the hashes and the artifacts uh, to the normal collection of things that I provide with these videos. So you'll be able to get your hands on it. Um, I'm, at a minimum, I'll make sure it's on the malware bazaar. Likely it already is. Okay, but let's say that we wanted to back up. Uh, and I wanted to show you how, you know, oftentimes that dynamic analysis can help speed up some of the unraveling of this. What I would oftentimes say is just kind of annoying layers of obfuscation. It's, it's usually not incredibly difficult. Um, but it still takes time to unravel. So if we look at this with one dump.py, there is a PowerShell script located in stream two, right? The rest of this is just gonna be those images used for the social engineering and, and the image to hide the script. If we want to dump that, dash, uh, whoops, dash S to identify our stream two, dash D to dump, dash O, and we will call this, um, you know, script, well, let's just call it script.ps1. Okay, now we can open this up with Visual Studio Code. And we'll go ahead and I'll turn on Word Wrap. And lo and behold, it is the script that we already analyzed. So you can see that we've already, we're already able to, uh, you know, we were already able to, to kind of tackle this and we didn't have to do it um, through this process of statically pulling this out. But, but again, sometimes it can be just as quick and then you don't have to deal with the extra considerations or concerns of dynamically executing something. Now, um, one thing also to notice, here is the argument that is passed into that script once it's executed. So this stage here where it, oh, I'm sorry, I mean this stage here where it replaces this percent one, right? So that's actually where that's coming from from this script. And I don't know what hip hop is used for. I didn't identify a use for it. So maybe it's just there for the lulls. I don't, I really don't know. Um, at this point though, we have identified really the next stage. And so now I can grab that DLL, as I mentioned, and we can take a look at that. 
Okay, uh, as it turns out, this uh, payload is still actively hosted, and I went ahead and just downloaded it today. It's a little bit different than um, the artifact that I looked at before I recorded this demo, so maybe I have a different OneNote doc. Um, it, it's following the very same convention that I saw previous, uh, down to you know all of the techniques that you saw here, including the export that it invoked when run DLL was, was used to, to you know, execute that DLL. Um, I went ahead and uh, moved that DLL over, so I downloaded it on a different system, moved it into here for analysis. You can see that the, there really isn't much for, for signatures. Uh, it says the GNU linker ID, GNU bin utils, and so what I'm seeing with these, although I, I haven't dug too deep into the analysis at this point, is just you know libraries that it's, it's wrapping around the main code to provide a bunch of noise. For example, if you look at the exports, um, you'll see that Let's make this just a little bit larger. You'll see that there are a number of exports here uh, that are, are probably have something to do with that library. Maybe they're just junk. Again, I haven't really dug into it too deep at this point. But the important part is that if we were to you know, focus down here on the last export wind, that's actually what's being invoked. Uh, so very similarly, if we wanted to analyze this with Ida Pro or, or something similar, um, we could certainly do that, and, and we just have to, you'll see once Ida is done loading, we just have to go to the right export. The use of the DLL does make things just a, a little bit more, I don't know, frustrating. Um, the file's currently not on Bazaar or, or, or Triage, so I'll get that uploaded here probably by the time you watch this and I get this video posted. Um, but in order to upload those to certain sandboxes, particularly to Triage, you have to be able to identify or tell it what export to call. And not all sandboxes will allow you to do that. Again, I don't recall if off the top of my head if triage does. Very similar with debugging. Oftentimes I want to debug these to help me with the analysis process. And if I'm not able to, you know, if you do that and, and you are able, actually I have a, a blog post here. Um, let's see if it can, See if I can pull it up. Um, you just you just have to make sure that when you invoke the debug session, there it is, and I will add this to the the video description as well. Um, you just have to make sure that when you invoke the debug session, that you are you're telling the debugger to use run DLL. You're pointing it to the location that the DLL exists, and then you're defining the export that should be called. So here's a, a real quick article, but you can see. This is the you know the start executable with um, with WinDebug. We're we're loading run DLL thirty two. We're identifying the path as well as the 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 export, right? So that argument needs to be supplied and and you, again you're essentially debugging through run DLL. And so what you'll see a little bit later in this article, um, I'm saying you know once run DLL has loaded, we don't really care about debugging run DLL thirty two. What we want to do is break when it loads the library, the module that was, was the argument, and then we can use something like Ida to go ahead and set those breakpoints. So um, here in order to get to our export, we just can go over to the export tab, type in wind, and now you can see this is where we would begin our, our analysis here if we wanted to, um, you know, to, to begin to unravel this. Okay, in terms of identification, uh, again, uploading it to Malwarebazaar, triage, um, you know, using some of those places to help with identification, that can all be very helpful to get a, a very concrete tag. Um, if you've looked at a few of these, and once you build up a little bit of that history, then you'll also be able to recognize the patterns in, you know, all the way back from, you know, how, how they're structuring the lures inside of these OneNote docs to the way that they're, they're you know, structuring the scripts, maybe even the host that they're using. Um, it's possible that if we go back to our our host here, that maybe this is actually on the URL house. And I have that open right now, so we can just search for it. Um, okay, and, and interestingly enough, it's not either. Um, so that's just one more piece of data that um, could be submitted. And, and I guess this also gives you a little bit of insight into, you know, typically the things that as I'm doing my analysis, when when I decide to what I decide to contribute, it's fairly straightforward. Um, but the URL house is a great place to get uh, URLs URLs such as this because this is actively hosting a a Qbot payload. 
And the Malware Bazaar is a great place to get the actual DLL itself and get that tagged and classified so that others can come along and find that. So again, I'll get those added um, or make sure that they get added by the time this video goes live. Um, in any case, hope you enjoyed the analysis and I will talk to you all in the next video.